My name is Jennifer Madrill. I'm the founder and executive director of Designers for Learning. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization with a mission to give people opportunities to gain volunteer experience while at the same time helping underserved educational needs. This is the final segment in a series of videos created for our Design in the Open Challenge, a professional development opportunity we're offering to explore ways to cultivate your professional presence in your chosen field. This course is inspired by themes forwarded in the book, Show Your Work, 10 Ways to Share Your Creativity and Get Discovered by Austin Kleon. In this video, I'm wrapping up our course by contemplating the final two themes of the book, including Theme 9, Sell Out, and Theme 10, Stick Around. In describing this ninth theme in the book, To Sell Out, Kleon notes on his blog that life of creativity is all about change, moving forward, taking chances, exploring new frontiers. So be ambitious, keep yourself busy, think bigger, expand your audience. Don't hobble yourself in the name of keeping it real or not selling out. Try new things. If an opportunity comes along that will allow you to do more of the kind of work you want to do, say yes. If an opportunity comes along that would mean more money but less of the kind of work you want to do, consider saying no. As Jeff Gumas, one of our earlier guests in this video series noted, Cleon puts language to many of our valued practices. If you spend a few moments on Designers for Learning's website, you'll see we are an open book when it comes to sharing our work and our work process. Our design artifacts are linked from our website, starting with our earliest project, a free and open webinar series in 2013 where I interviewed over a dozen educators and design professionals to hear their stories and ask their advice about how to design experiential learning opportunities. Why did I go to the trouble of coordinating, facilitating, editing, and posting a webcast series for free? As a recent graduate student with a doctoral degree in instructional design, I was newly appointed adjunct faculty teaching an instructional design course. While the students in my course were really well versed in the theory and the research in the field, most were very apprehensive about their abilities to do the job of an instructional designer. In listening to this recorded webinar series, you can trace my evolving understanding and approach to tackling the need of providing instructional design students with experiential learning opportunities. For example, at the beginning of the webinar series, I rarely used the term service learning. However, by the end, I'd laid the foundation for Designers for Learning as a nonprofit with a service learning mission. The themes that emerged from these webinar conversations that were held and shared in the open have since now been published in an academic journal. They've influenced other articles and book chapters on design that I've written and form the basis for Designers for Learning's current work. The key takeaway from this story is that I was able to develop not only my idea of the need and opportunity to provide experiential learning opportunities to students, but I also developed as a design professional and became a nonprofit founder as a very unanticipated result. While the audience for my original webcast was in the dozens of people, Designers for Learning now has over 5,000 contacts in our database. These include prior participants in our courses, other volunteers, and people interested in our work. This level of growth would have been hard, if not impossible, without the open sharing process our organization has taken as we've grown and developed. The primary reason I'm so drawn to Cleon's message and show your work is he doesn't focus on open sharing as a means of self-promotion, for example, to get a better job or to sell a product, but rather as a transparent professional growth process that helps you to reflectively think about your work as you share it and naturally attract others interested and invested in your work. The final principle Cleon covers in Show Your Work is to stick around. As a relatively new nonprofit trying to find a model to sustain our charitable mission, this section of the book has a lot of meaning for me. In a nutshell, Cleon's message is along the lines of the old adage, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. In his blog, Cleon notes, every career is full of ups and downs. When you're in the middle of living out your life and career, you don't know whether you're up or you're down or what's about to happen next. Cleon cautions, it's very important not to quit prematurely. He notes, the people who get what they're going after are very often the ones who just stick around long enough. As came through in our interviews in this Design in the Open Challenge, your greatest assets as a professional are the people you know, and more importantly, those who know and value your work. In Show Your Work, 
Cleon advocates a way of working he calls chain smoking. The idea is to avoid losing momentum during your career. Through a process of reflection, when you wind down one project, take stock in what you did. Too often when we attempt to branch out into a new field, we only look ahead and fear the unknown. We spend considerable time dwelling on all of the new contacts who we don't know and who don't know our work. However, in reality, very often we find new work based on connections we've made in the past. As Cleon notes in Share Your Work, the thing is you never really start over. You don't lose all of the work that's come before. Even if you try to toss it aside, the lessons that you've learned from it will seep into what you do next. So as we conclude this course, I'll leave you with one last story and my own parting advice on this topic of managing your professional presence. Always keep in mind that you've done a lot of things and you have a range of contacts, skills, and talents that are valuable to potential collaborators and employers. Take stock in those skills and cultivate your existing relationships. As one last story, a few years ago, I was teaching a course on consulting skills for instructional designers. Most of the graduate level students were new to the field and trying to gain experience for a new career in instructional design. While their backgrounds were very diverse, most were career changers with significant experience in other careers or jobs. One student was trying to break into instructional design from a career in the restaurant business. Like most of us who are new to a field, he was apprehensive and he was frustrated by his perceived inability to gain the attention of future clients and potential employers. During one of our conversations, I asked him to tell me about what he did in his old job and who he interacted with both inside and outside of the restaurant. He could have gone on for hours. Then I asked him to think about the work he did and what he saw as common problems that could have been solved through better training. In a matter of a few minutes, he rattled off a long list of problems from employee onboarding to food preparation. While in his mind he was done with that chapter of his life, his best contacts and expertise were in the restaurant business. His potential clients were right there in front of him. He knew their names, he lived their experiences, he knew their issues and their opportunities, and now he knew how to help them to address those issues through instructional interventions. As all teachers know, we wait for those aha moments, and he had one right there in front of me. As much as he longed to leave his old job and his old career behind him, he'd never considered that selling his new skills as a designer to his old contacts in the restaurant industry could be a viable opportunity. Further, he hadn't really taken stock in what relationships and skills he'd gained during those past experiences. Like him, your past experiences and contacts are a potential stepping stone to your future ambitions. As Cleon shares in the last page of the book, show your work and when the right people show up, pay close attention to them because they'll have a lot to show you. I truly hope you found this design in the open challenge to be valuable. I wanna thank you personally for joining us and please keep an eye out for future opportunities to participate with Designers for Learning in one of our courses or our service learning projects. Thank you again. Thank you.